Washington University in St. Louis. This is the Fight for 15 march. It's a really big march. I hope I can get on.
had to turn the sound off. Sorry. There we go. Pretty big protest here.
They're going into the building or just up They're on the stairs? The quad, which is up, up the top of the stairs and then just through an archway. Oh, okay. And then there's a grassy it, area up here. Okay, I, mean, I, go, the, I get to it through this archway. Through this way, yep. Okay, well, we are finding the wheelchair, sort of, well, sort of wheelchair accessible path. Okay, there's, there's really no need for cobblestone ever <laughs> on any wheelchair path, ever. No. This is, oh, ow. See, that would really be hard in my manual chair. So, the manual chair is much more portable. There's pluses and minuses for both kinds of chairs. <laughs> yeah, well, when we get on the flat part, 
I can't keep up with you. Yeah, well, I can slow down. <laughs> That's okay. So, I've lost them for a few minutes, but we'll get there. <laughs> Good thing I'm not in my manual chair because this is, this is, yeah, this is not, this is not what you would call, this is not, would not be accessible to a manual wheelchair. No. This is, this is, this is almost cobblestone. Yeah, this is ridiculous. You've got some fat tires there, yeah, I know, I know. You could not do this in a manual chair. Your, your the casters would co get caught in the cracks. My, my tires on my power chair are much, <laughs> oh, oh, somebody's already, we got living wage chalk here. Oh, looks like somebody's got some chalk. <laughs> oh. Probably when we get here, they'll, they'll turn around and go back down. They need grout. If they're going to put bricks down, they need yeah. to use grout. Because this yeah. is really painful. Well, they, put, they put some sand in between to fill Something. in the, the, the crack. It's very painful, and you could, get a, you could get a manual wheelchair tire caught in that really easily. This is not this is this is not what you would call ADA compliant. Nope. This is it fifteen dollars here? Here we are. Now there's another okay. set of stairs. Another set of stairs. I don't Great. Know if there's a way around it. Follow me for fifteen. What does that say? Something steps. way down there. Let me look and see if I can find a way. I don't know. <laughs> Is that the quadrangle? Or Okay, are they coming this way or are they staying down there? Okay. I think eventually they're coming this they're way. I think they're kind of rallying for a okay. second and then heading this way. Okay. under law can, can actually be paid way less than minimum wage. Yeah. Very specifically, as a group, yeah. disabled people, largest minority, almost 20% of the population. Yeah, they should have had at least one band. 
ban on electronic cigarettes too, do they? Mm -hmm. They don't have a ban on electronic cigarettes too, do they? <laughs> I don't. Know. I don't understand outdoor bans. You've got cars already polluting the air. I don't know how stopping a cigarette outside. I, I have no problem banning cigarettes inside. I have no problem with that. It's a, it, no, it, it, it's, it's actually should happen in some places, especially where there's like children. There's all kinds of cars. They did that at the University of Missouri in Columbia, and they have a huge coal-burning power plant that's fused black pollution into the sky over the university all the time. But they ban smoking on campus. Yeah. You can't smoke outside, but they can. But their 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 big coal power plant. They could switch to solar. <laughs> Yeah, see, they're on the step, uh, you know, uh, I hope Short Stack's getting these speeches because there's no way I can get them. Right. Because, uh, you know, I'm not going to rant right now, but Short Stack's, uh, Stream, her, her stream is not connecting to her Twitter right now, so just go to her channel page. Uh, I don't know it offhand, and I can't really tweet it out right now. But you know, just just go to Short Stack's uh, Twitter feed, and or you know, find her Ustream channel because she's streaming. I, I, I'm not sure if she's getting the speeches or not. I'm not. She was down there earlier. <laughs> I don't think I'm picking up the speeches. That's why I was telling my viewers to follow the other live streamer. Because yeah. her notice for her stream didn't tweet out because her, her Twitter's not connected to her, her, her Ustream at the moment. But if they go to her channel, she should be streaming. <laughs>
coming this way, so I went around, but they're down there. I can't get to them. I think they're coming this way next to them. I hope so, because I'm missing all the speeches. <laughs> Oh, the spy center? Yeah, okay. It tomorrow and, uh, not letting the public come into their room. Oh, I saw something about that. Yeah, so we're going to be I down there. there. Uh, and more people to the Twitter uh, one o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, so that's St. Louis Police Headquarters tomorrow. Tomorrow, because they have a new St. Louis Spice Center. It's having a grand opening, but it's close to the public. <laughs> I'll take a picture. And, I'll take it a picture and post it on Twitter later. I'm sorry. What did you say? I think they call it. What do they call? What do the police call it? Live intelligence center. No, I'm not sure. I know Stack is Short is down there streaming and possibly can hear actually hear the speeches. But her Twitter is not connected to her Ustream, so a notice did not go out. So you just need to go directly to her Ustream channel. Hopefully you'll be able to see the speeches there. I hope. I, I don't know exactly where she is. I lost a track of her, but I think she's down there. <laughs> you want me to carry it down there? See if I can get the speeches. Oh, wait, what's your name? Paul. Paul. Okay, I'm going to apprentice Paul here. As my, this is my apprentice. This is going to be my apprentice live streamer, Paul. He's going to take my stream down there and try to catch some speeches. Okay. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Ten years ago, we started the city on another important measure. On April 4th, 1965, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis. And he was there in Memphis fighting for increasing wages for service workers. So let's honor this history and fight for economic justice for all workers and for the students who are going to be taking those jobs one day as well. Thank you. Hello guys, how are you doing? This, I'm LaShonda, I'm a home, I'm a healthcare worker. I want, first of all, I want everybody to give themselves an applause for being brave enough to come out here. Oh, I've never talked to this many people before. Louder! 
Well, we all know what we're out here for. We're all out here for the same exact cause. Um, so I'm just wanting to really just give some words of encouragement. We have a lot of naysayers, a lot of people out here that don't believe that we deserve what we're asking for. But my tax dollars do the same thing that their tax dollars do. That's right! And I pay just as many taxes as they do, but I'm not bringing home anything. As a healthcare worker, I take care of human beings. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There are times that, I mean, I have high blood pressure. There are times I have to choose between getting medicine for my child or taking care of my high blood pressure. And I don't know, you know, everybody knows that high blood pressure is a silent killer. Um, right. But I have to bust my butt every day. And my son is very scared for me. Every day I go to work, he's very scared that I might not come home one day. And then what happens, because I am the breadwinner of the family, and that's kind of messed up because I barely make anything to be called the breadwinner. So basically what I want everybody to do is, we're gonna continue this fight. It doesn't matter if we ever go on strike again. It doesn't matter if anybody believes in this cause. I just feel like we all deserve this and we should all ask for what we want. You, a closed mouth don't get fed, guys. And so therefore, we're gonna keep this fight. And when I go home tonight, I'm gonna think back on this. Like, I should've said this, I should've said this. But <laughs> I just want everybody to just hold in strong. When you go back to work tomorrow or wherever, wherever you are gonna be doing, go back to classes or when you go back to everything, your regular life tomorrow, just remember that everybody that's out here, if you look around you, everybody out here, we all got your back. That's right! <laughs> okay, hello. So I'm Sean, I'm also from Wu Slam, and I'm here for um, Show Me 15. So I'm here because I believe that a world in which there's such a huge distance between the common man and the CEO is not a world that any of us want to live in. That's right! So this poem I'm going to perform is actually not mine. It was written by another member of Wu Slam, Taylor Geiger. Taylor, can I can I see your hand? Yeah. Give a round of applause for Taylor. So this poem is about Taylor's experience with this campaign. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and perform it now. We are not ready to go to war, we are not ready to go to war, we are not ready to go to war. When the echo of riot gear bounced off the buildings from the other block, we knew we were not ready. A gas canister, the first shrill siren wood boots on the ground, a row of plastic shields ahead like teeth waiting, waiting, watching the encroaching moss suck us in a jolt to the chest, a beanbag with a nice feet scatter, a clatter from warriors from from above, looking down a sea of human stands parted, then crashes back into itself like a mouth. See, we were not ready to go to war. In ten dozen cities across this country, occupied thought themselves ready to fight a war we were not ready for ourselves. On November 23rd of last year, I was illegally banned from Walmart for life for talking to employees about their rights as workers. Where is the lawyer willing to mobilize for me against the Walton's illegal, Walton's legal forces? But it's not illegal. If you've got the money to scare them away the prosecution, is it? You own the land if you've got the guns to keep the natives running or if you've got the gall to light a flame in places nobody's watching. A full-time Walmart associate earns less than 70% of the federal poverty line for a family of four. This from the largest employer of blacks and Hispanics in the US. This from the largest private employer in the US. But in the US, what's private? In the US, privacy is a privilege brought by profit. To keep your profile hidden, but Facebook too is in the databases of Washington, in the databases of Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch and Co, McDonald's. And we know the things we do not know about our money are vast and horrible. That money is a flickering warmth in our room, but it's pushed from hearts of darkness. It's our groceries, our gifts, just affordable pieces on a sweatshop game board. It's our key to the handheld world wide web most of the world can see. It's free market, it's patriotism, it's food right for investment, and it's democracy, money. It's democracy in America. Campaigns are really fundraisers. The rich hold all the votes, tending their fingers and wiggling their mustaches in their executive suites. When I was banned from Walmart in the quiet afternoon hours of Black Friday, escorted from the parking lot by two waiting squad cars, my friend smiled. And I remembered when he got arrested in Chicago by riot police. When he told me about it, he said, 
It was beautiful. <laughs> we were beautiful. We just weren't ready to go to war because if we went to war, it wouldn't be with Monsanto or Walmart or Citibank. They'd set it up. So we'd be fighting mothers, employees, managers, police officers, wage laborers, just like us. They make us fight ourselves. They make us fight ourselves. We might not be ready to fight this war, but this war is one we are already fighting every day. Hello, St. Louis. Can you hear me? I'm Jeffrey Merritt. I'm here returning to WashU after three decades. Three decades ago, I was a student here. Now I'm back as an adjunct faculty. I'm here today to fight for 415 and for a living wage for everybody. For the people that power this nation and for the adjunct faculty who's been pushed into semi-permanent part-time work at low wages. Wow. I'm an anthropologist and also an adjunct faculty at Lindenwood, at Maryville, and at Webster Universities. Now for a long time I taught somewhere else, over in Asia, in Tokyo. 15 years. In Tokyo, the contingent faculty actually make a living wage. So I was astounded to find out what my adjunct faculty peers were making in the United States when I returned five years ago. Over the past generation, a majority of our university faculty have been transformed into a new category of workers. These workers are called adjuncts, temporary professors hired on short-term contingent contracts at very low wages, no benefits, no health care, no path to full employment. These supposedly additional adjunct faculty, of which I am one, now con constitute a majority of the teaching, thank you. Uh, constitute a majority of the, of the faculty members on most university campuses. 70 or even 75% of the teaching faculty on many campuses are now adjunct faculty. That is, they're hired on short-term, low-wage contracts. If you are a student, you may wonder, why is it so difficult to meet my professor? The answer is simple. Your adjunct faculty are actually across town teaching at another institution. I teach at three. A colleague of mine is holding down one job while teaching two others. She teaches a course in human rights over at Webster University, but her main gig is a job at Trader Joe's. In other words, she has a full-time job at Trader Joe's so that she can do what she was trained to do as a PhD in human rights activism and teach at one class over at Webster. That's not right. How can that be right? Well, the cost of attending our universities is skyrocketing. It's higher than ever. The part-time faculty are actually living at or near poverty. I'm not kidding. There was a recent study that came out. Here in Missouri, here in Missouri, the Show Me State, more than 25% of the adjunct faculty is actually living at or below poverty. That ain't right! That ain't right! That ain't right, and I'm here to change it. I'm here with Faculty Forward to change that and to stand with the, work, the minimum wage workers who are here today to stand with us. Just as our students are being trapped by huge student debts, our precarious, adjunctified faculty are being trapped in permanently part-time employment. A PhD wasn't supposed to give me a contingent gig where I never knew when my next class was gonna come through or not. It wasn't supposed to give me a gig with no, no health care and no benefits. The drive to rationalize and corporatize our institutions of higher ed has left a majority of the teaching adjunct faculty with no voice within the university. Now that's a high price to pay for efficiency. Too high. It's too high for our students, it's too high for our scholarship, and it's too high for our democratic ideals. That's, right. That's, right. That's another reason why your adjunct professors across this country are linking arms and organizing. 
But I have some good news today too, very good news. After six months of grassroots organizing at Webster University, we won the right to a vote on collective action. And we'll win that vote too. And we'll win the next and the next, not just at Washington University, not just at Webster University, but at campuses across this nation, the adjunctified faculty is finally united. that are here with me today. Stand united, don't be bullied, don't be intimidated. Stand with your colleagues. This is our moment, this is our time. Look around you, St. Louis. This is what social justice looks like. Look you, St. Louis. This is what democratic action looks like. Stand together, grasp the moment, seize the future, seize the day. at St. Louis University, and um, I'm here with my fellow adjuncts today to support all of you brave workers, and we're also here to raise awareness. Oh, can you hear me out there now? <laughs> Louder? Oh, shout. Oh, okay, that's not my nature, but I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just here to raise awareness that there's a need for this in higher education as well, because adjunct professors are paid very low wages, we get zero job security and no benefits. That's not right. One in four part-time faculty here in Missouri are living below the poverty line. I know other adjuncts who are trying to support their families under these conditions. They're trying to feed their children and pay their rent and their car payment and all that stuff. And at the end of the month, they don't have enough money to pay their utility bills. They get their electricity cut off every other month. It's ridiculous. That ain't right. It's not right. I work three part-time jobs just to support myself, and that affects my students because I can't give them the time and the energy that they deserve and that they pay for. This is sort of a dirty little secret in academia that nobody wants to talk about, but we're talking about it now, and we're here to support you guys and to join the fight for 15 because we know that together we can make things better. Can everybody hear me? Say 15 if you can hear me. My name is Chris Bain. I'm an adjunct professor in writing here at Washington University, where I got my degree, uh, my PhD, in 2012. I've been an adjunct here for four years. By way of telling you why I'm here, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Both of my parents were in unions. My dad was in the UAW. Uh, my caterpillar, my mom was in the IBW at Ameren, both in Decatur, Illinois. Neither of my parents went to college, so they stressed the importance to me and my brother for upward social mobility of education. I took it to heart, uh, maybe a little more than my parents thought, and got my PhD. Education wasn't really my brother's thing. My folks, through hard work and resourcefulness, were able to provide a good middle class life for me and my brother. And that was only possible with the union. They taught me this from a very young age. If you told my parents when I was born that I would someday have a PhD from one of the most prestigious universities and most wealthiest private universities in the country, but that I would teach there and not be able to make a living wage, they would say that doesn't make any sense. You don't, it ain't right. It doesn't make any sense. But that's the truth nevertheless. I work at the university from where I received my degree, and the only year that I worked full time, I made $24,000 that year. That's right. That's not right. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, that's about a third, a little bit more than a third of what one student pays in tuition and fees to attend the university for one year. This this, this labor system is not an accident. Right. Um, it's not a mistake. Since the late 1960s, colleges and universities have been shifted to a corporate model for their labor systematically eliminating full-time positions and replacing them with cheap contingent labor. 
um, who are who work far cheaper than full-time faculty and who receive virtually no benefits. Now, all during this time, to wish campuses an adjunct is administration, okay? So there are a lot of them, administrators, and there are a lot of us, but they make a lot more money than we do. I'm here in solidarity with the Fight for 15, and to fight for $15,000 a course with my colleagues, because for far too long we have undervalued labor in our country. And despite the cultural value we place in education, we are grossly underpaying those people to do the work of educating. As both Jeffrey and Hillary said, about 26% 20, of Missouri's adjunct labor is living below the poverty line. These are people with advanced degrees in a country where we tell our children that education is a path to success in life. You're standing in a place that is a testament to the belief that education is a path to success in life. Right? But 